For this week's project, we're going to be making gargoyles. And when I was a kid, I remember watching a cartoon called Gargoyles about stone sculptures that sort of came to life at night and they were superheroes or something like that. And I always had this notion that gargoyles were meant to be sort of um, superstitious, magical thinking protectors of buildings and the people that inhabit them and things like that. And to be fair, there is some inspiration there. Medieval architects and artists were inspired by um, ancient Greek mythology and the idea of griffins, which is along similar lines. But the reality is gargoyles were a very specific functional type of sculpture. And their function was to protect the building, but not in any sort of superstitious way. They protected buildings in a very practical way by acting as a gutter system. If you look at these photographs of gargoyles, you'll notice a few characteristics. They stick out from the sides of the building and they generally have these big open mouths because what's happening inside the gargoyle is it's basically a downspout. There's a, there's a pipe running through it to channel water draining off the roof going through the gargoyle and it gets basically spit out away from the building. So it protects the building, but it's protecting it from erosion. It's not anything sort of magical thinking. It's just, um, it's just a functional object that is made to be very decorative and ornate because that was sort of the medieval style. So today we're gonna to make our own clay gargoyles. So I'm gonna take my clay and first set aside about a third of it to use later for decoration. And I'm gonna use most of the clay to roll a ball and make a pinch pot. I wanna make the walls of the pinch pot generally about as thick as my finger. And if you look carefully, you'll notice I'm sort of pulling out and turning the bottom of it. So it doesn't open on the bottom, it sort of opens on the side. I'm sort of pulling out a jaw by pushing clay from the back of it towards the front. And that's gonna make like a, a big open mouth shape. I'm gonna pinch one of the walls above that to make a nose shape. And I'm not worried about it getting perfect at this stage. I'm just trying to establish where the eyes, nose, and mouth will be. So I, I press my thumbs in and make some eye sockets. I'm making just a rough triangle for the nose. And then I start to smooth over around it. One of the things I really like about gargoyles is they are so sort of over the top in their decoration and like exaggerated expressions. And I would encourage you to do that. If you're having trouble forming the jaw, um, I'm gonna press mine back a little bit. A lot of students have it where it's just like open at the bottom. One simple way to do it, if you're having trouble twisting it around and pushing it towards the front, is just roll a coil and stick that on like a jawbone, and then smooth over to, to get it all unified, smooth over the cracks, merge the two pieces, and that can be another way to sort of shift that opening to the front, is instead of pushing the clay from the back towards the front and, and scooping it out, you can just add a coil of clay to make a jawbone and attach that at the base. Now, after I've done that, a lot of this is largely decoration. Um, a lot of students always find this gross when I do it, but I, I, I find that I get a better nose by pressing the back of my tool into the nostrils, like shoving it up the nose, not only to make holes where the nostrils uh, would be, but also to make it flare out around the edges the way that a real nose would. Um, I'm then going to smooth over the the eye sockets, smooth over essentially the skin. I'm going to roll little balls of clay to attach and put in to make the eyeballs. Uh, remember when you attach pieces, you always want to scratch it to create loose edges that get tangled, kind of like Velcro. Um, you want to get it wet or slip to make it soft and sticky. Uh, water or slip with a, like water with a little bit of clay in it is is like the glue for your clay. And then smooth over the cracks, get it unified, and make sure those two pieces become one. When I make teeth, instead of making individual teeth, I roll a little coil and I stick like a line of teeth in and then I use a pencil or a needle tool or another tool to sort of press in and etch and create a separation between them. I find that much easier than trying to create all the individual teeth and put them in one at a time. But remember, whatever pieces you're attaching as you attach them, slip, scratch, and smooth. You want to you want to scratch it to create those loose edges that get tangled. You want to 
get it wet to soften it and make the clay stickier and you want to smooth over the cracks. When I make the ears, I just roll a ball of clay and I press my thumb in. Um, that creates a nice indentation so it has that feel of like the, the folds and the cartilage um, around the, the edges of the ear. And I always smooth it over on the back, push clay from one piece to another. I want to make sure I get those two pieces unified. Um, one thing I really like to do as I'm decorating it is I like to attach more and more pieces and I like to make it really sort of cartoonish and exaggerated. I like things that are very asymmetrical. Um, when you are thinking about how to decorate it, a good strategy can be to just make the pieces and sort of dry fit it, place it on there, see does that look right or not? And then if it looks good to you, attach it more securely. So you first just make the piece and place it on there to see how it looks and weigh your different options. And then if you like the way it looks, then you attach it more securely. Make sure you, make sure you scratch, slip, smooth. Scratch it, wet it, smooth over the cracks. Um, after I've got all the pieces in place, then I really want to pay attention to the texture. Texture creates sort of a visual separation between pieces, but it also makes it stronger, smoothing over those cracks. On the back of mine, I like to poke in a hole where it can hang on a hook or a nail so that it will hang off of my wall and not just have to sit flat. And of course, as always, the final step, you're going to want to etch your name on the back of your work, name, initials, some sort of identification. So when it comes out of the kiln, we know whose is whose. You know, one of the things that's really great about gargoyles is there is so much room to be creative and expressive. They're, they're often inspired by people and animals and mythological creatures. So you have total freedom to be very creative and create a mashup of different features, and like I say, really exaggerate those features. Make it, make, make it asymmetrical, make it twisted and contorted. Go over the top with it. Be creative, have fun with it, make something unique.